Great. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you all for joining us today on this lovely sunny Friday. Uh, I'm Emily, and I'm the content manager here at Verdi, and I'll be your host for this webinar session. If you've joined us before, I'm sure you know my face by now, but if you haven't, welcome and thank you for joining. Now, as you can see, it's not just me today. Uh, I'm joined by Toby from Smooth Digital and the hugely popular Tea with Toby series. I'm sure you've all probably watched a few of those. Um, and today we're going to be chatting all about marketing your home care business. And I'll let Toby introduce himself properly in just a minute once everyone has had a chance to join. As it's just gone one minute past one, and I know we tend to have a few late joiners. Um, so while we just wait for everyone to come on board, if you could just say a quick hello to us in the chat box, as you are all on mute, so if you talk to the screen, we won't hear you. Um, but I'd like to know that you're there, so if you could just pop a message in or an emoji, let us know you're listening, that would be great. Cool. Uh, hi Gemma, hi Peter, hi Sarah, hi Leslie, we've got loads of you today. Antonia, hello from Edinburgh. I hope it's the sun is shining in Edinburgh as much as it is here in London. It's a really hot day here today. Yes, bacon. <laughs> cool. Now, just while you're all saying hi, hello from the garden. Oh, I wish I was in the garden. Now, I just want to say a quick note. So today, uh, as I've just mentioned, it is a boiling hot day. It's over 30 degrees here in London, and I have my windows open today which wouldn't really be a statement in itself, but uh, I just need to let you know that because outside they are building the biggest monstrosity ever and it can sometimes get a bit loud. So if it does get loud, if they start drilling into the floor, I will hop up and close the window, but don't worry, I'm not leaving you to fend for yourselves. I will be back. I just don't think anybody wants to hear drilling in their Friday lunch break. <laughs> just to clear that one up for you. Now, hopefully it won't. Great. Now, I think most people are here, so I think we can get going. Great. Now, just to be sure before we all get started, Toby, I know you just, just said a quick hello there, but can you just say hello again now everyone's here, just to make sure they can hear you? Hello, mic check testing. One, two, can you hear me all right? By the looks of it, I think yeah. everyone can hear us. Can we hear me okay? Do we need an adjustment? Uh, Ravi says we, yes, we've got loads of thumbs up, loads of yeses, great. <laughs> now, if you do have any sound issues now or later, just pop a note into the chat box, as we do have some of the team uh, from Birdies, Ravi in particular, is on the chat to help you if you get stuck, and we also have Cameron from Smooth Digital joining, and th that means basically if you need any help with anything, pop a note in and they're there. Cameron will be helping you with any specific marketing queries, and Ravi is just there to help with sound issues or anything to do with Birdie, and basically anything. If you just want to have a chat with them, feel free. <laughs> cool. Now, more from Toby in just a sec. Um, but first of all, let me just run you through why we're here today. Now, marketing your care business might not have been top of your priorities list recently, um, but you've all joined us today, so I'm sure you want to know why it should be. Or perhaps you are marketing and you'd like to know how to do it better. Now, marketing in the current climate might feel a little bit daunting, but obviously we are now moving out of this kind of COVID world that we were in a few months ago, and the landscape really is very, very exciting. And I'll let Toby explain why, uh, why this is, and why marketing, well, exactly what you need to do to market effectively in a post-COVID world. Now, before we kick off, and before I start asking the questions, it would be really, really interesting to know if anyone who's joined us today is doing any kinds of marketing at the minute. Um, so if you're doing anything like Facebook advertising or Google advertising, um, let us know in the chat box. And that way we kind of get a grasp on the kinds of things you're doing now and we can tailor the conversation to sort of help you out if there is anything that's interesting that you, know, you want to talk about in that space. So please do let us know. Cool. Now, we want this session to be really, really useful to you. And just like I just asked you just then, I'll be asking you to share things with us as we go. And of course, if you have any questions, if you just put them into the chat box, we'll try and get to them as we're answering the questions. Or if not, we do have a designated bit of time at the end for a Q&A. So rest assured, anything you say, we will try our hardest to get to. Now, we are already a few minutes into the session and you did not come here to listen to me talk. So I'm going to hand over to Toby and 
the first question I have for you, Toby, is can you explain who you are and what you do for all of our listeners, please? Yes. So I'm the marketing strategy director at Smooth Digital. Smooth Digital is a digital marketing agency which basically specializes in the care sector. So our clients are care homes, home care businesses. Now, ultimately, what we really do is we help, there's more home care businesses on here. So we help home care businesses solve the whole chicken and egg problem. Not enough customers, not enough uh, recruitment leads. And what we do is we create marketing systems, which basically predictably pump out new inquiries on both sides. So you've got that steady growth. And as you can see there, we've got tea with Toby, Cameron's a moderator here. Mm -hmm. If you are not aware of it, we're on, it's a podcast where we talk, we have basically have a growth focused conversation. You can find it on Spotify, iTunes, or if you're connected to our LinkedIn, we also post about it every, oh, lovely. It's in, it's in the chat there. We post about it every two weeks. Great. And that Cameron, you just posted that there. Also, I will share that link again with you in the follow-up email. So you've all got that. And I do highly recommend you go and have a listen to it. Even if you just put it on in the background, it's really great learning. Um, but yeah, I will share that with you. Now, just to have a look, we've just had some people say what they're using in terms of marketing. Uh, Google AdWords, Facebook Boost and leafleting. Social media, leafleting, advertising. Uh, Twitter and Facebook currently looking at Google Ads and SEO. And that's just interesting to know what our audience is kind of up to at the minute. Cool. Now, you just kind of went over this one very quickly. Um, but Toby, can you tell us exactly what Smooth Digital does to help care agencies? I know that a lot of people, as you said, chicken and egg problem, they're not sure where to start. So what is it exactly that you do that, or that they need to do that you do for them? Yeah, so, you know, people can do this for themselves, but we, it's a, it's a, for us, it's a, it's a done for you service. And we basically create a marketing st strategy and in execute on it where we, we advertise you on certain platforms like Google ads, Facebook ads, YouTube, um, whatever it is, which produces that end result. And the end result is you have a consistent flow of um, inquiries from both potential carers and also uh, private paying uh, customers as well. I'm sure many of the people that are on here that have said that they're, they're sort of dabbling in marketing will know how difficult that can be to stay on top of those ever changing trends. Um, and that's something that you guys do. And I'm sure, yeah, if anyone has any feedback on what they've been doing so far or anything they're particularly struggling with, that would be really, really great to know as well. Cool. Now, the next question I have for you is, but just as I mentioned in the beginning, we're coming out of this, this COVID world and obviously it's still very uncertain. So why is it important that care agencies consider marketing now? So, Post-COVID, so pre-COVID, um, traditionally, most businesses were investing a lot in the more traditional styles of marketing. That's the, you know, leaflets, magazines, billboards, notice boards in your local GP. And the reason why they were doing that is because that's where the eyeballs were. That's where the mm -hmm. attention was. However, the Telegraph reported that there is, uh, we now spend 24 hours a week on our mobile phones. That, that's equivalent to a day, just doing that on our mobile phones. So we now know where the attention is. So it's important that we shift our marketing to where the eyeballs are and where the attention is. So that was post COVID. Now with COVID being in lockdown for many three months, people have developed habits and are heavily reliant on the internet. So people are you know, searching for things in Google. People are you know on their social networks they're always connected and by the way that 24-hour stat excluded tablets desktops siri cortana etc so it's just really important that you are uh, aligning your marketing with how the users are behaving now i didn't realize that it was 24 hours that i mean that was pre-covid so it's probably pre more now and to be fair, I think it's more. That only works out to three hours and a half per day. Yeah. And I think probably more than that, but that's the that's what the stats say. And I suppose the interesting thing as well is now with people not being able to get out and about as much, uh, they, they might not be going out for the paper or, you know, picking up a leaflet that would be in their normal, you know, local magazine or something. And instead they're getting that information from Facebook or online channels. Absolutely. So some people's um, marketing 
plans were to do a lot of community engagement. So now there isn't going to be, you know, people with the social distancing, people may be reluctant to sort of, you know, engage the way they used to. So now is a great time to just switch. I, I, I'm guessing most of the people on this chat, on this um, webinar today, have made a lot of changes in the way that they communicate with their teams, Zoom, Skype, everything. And users, the, the people who are searching, sons and daughters, have made a lot of changes as well. People are doing sort of WhatsApp, yeah. uh, communicating with family through WhatsApp, uh, video calls, Zooms, it's all changed. So it's just to making sure that you're keeping up to date and your um, business is up to date as well. Yeah, I think that's a really, really great point. And just just something to be aware of that, you know, it's always changing um, the way that people are searching and finding information. And, you know, being online is never going to go away, like ever. So <laughs> being in front of people where they're looking for it is, is super, super important. Now, the next question I have for you is, with digital marketing, what's the most important thing or the first thing a care agency should do? We know that many of these people on the chat are using some form of, of marketing, but imagine they've done nothing at all. What should they do? Mm, you, you know what? Even the people who have, who are doing some form of marketing, usually when people come to us and they say, you know, they're running Google Ads or whether they're doing anything, we always say start with the website. The website is your home. It's actually, you know, you don't have a physical home. So the website is the home. And no matter how someone hears that about your company, whether it's through a recommendation, a leaflet, a directory, they all nav navigate to your home. Yeah. So it's important that your website is, um, you know, is up to date and has the relevant things on there as well. And also one of the other things is, I don't know who published the stat, but they said people make seven visits to the site before reaching out. And um, Google published, it's called Zero Moment of Truth. And what that is, traditionally, you know, actually going way back with the yellow pages, let's say this is yellow pages. If someone was looking for a service, they'll flick through, make a couple of calls. If they wasn't happy with what they heard, they'll keep flicking and make another call. Nowadays, people are doing a lot of their decision making without your involvement. So it's important that you're putting your best foot forward and that website is going to make a, a key difference. That's a, a really great point and, and one to remember a lot. I know that you know websites can sometimes be the back of someone's mind and they might think, oh, it's fine, we're getting you know um, loads of contracts in from the local authorities, we don't need one, but actually it's super, super important. Now, I'm just going to take a really, really slight segue as that was a, a useful point from Toby and I just want to sort of jump on the back of that and let you know about a service that we're offering at Birdie. Um, and as Toby said, your website is your home. It's where everyone goes to and, you know, they might make seven visits there uh, before they even make an inquiry. So it has to be showing you off to the best that it can do. And we know that it's a time consuming thing to do. Um, you can create a website fairly easily, but it may not represent you in the best way, um, especially if you don't have the skills. And, and, you know, most of us don't have the skills to create a really flashy website. So. What we're doing now at Birdie is because we've recognized this and we've heard this from our partners time and time and time again, uh, we're offering a new service where we will basically build you uh, a website um, from scratch and we'll take anything from your existing website and rebuild it for you so it's SEO optimized. It includes all of your content. It uses the latest sort of layouts and designs uh, so that it's eye-catching. And we'll also maintain it um, on a monthly basis to make sure that you're hitting the right keywords and stuff so it can be found. Um, and what this means is that essentially, if you have a website that isn't really working hard enough, we can help you with that. Now, um, if you're interested in that, if you're a Birdie partner agency and you're looking for a website, or you think yours needs an update, um, I really do urge you to get in touch with us um, just to either drop us a message in the chat box and I'll follow that up with you or after this webinar I'm going to be sending an email around to all of you and I'll include a leaflet that you can take a really really good look at um, and there'll be all the information that you need in there but um, that was all I wanted to say on that and I'm really sorry for jumping in I know you're not here to listen to me <laughs> so I'm going to go back and uh, stop the sales pitch and apologize for that but it's a really useful service and it's something that I think is super important for us to mention here um, and obviously for our birdie partner agencies we're making sure that it's really good value um, so do reach out if you're interested in that but now 
as we've just had a question come in here uh, that says, what are the key tips for website inclusion? And I'm sorry, Lizzie, I stopped uh, Toby in his tracks to make yeah. my marketing spiel, but now we're off to this one. So Toby, please tell us the key elements that any business needs to have on <laughs> their website. So good question, Lizzie. And this is important because a lot of people invest time in creating you know, beautiful websites, lovely, but sometimes they're not fit for purpose. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is they don't do a good job in giving the information the users after, building up their confidence, and then making it easy for them to reach out. So what I'll do is I'll just walk you through as if I was one of the families, a son or daughter of someone that requires care, and what I would want to see at each stage. So let me start. Let's say, for example, I've done a Google search, and I've typed in um, home care agency Surrey, for example. I see an ad. I click through to the through to the website, the first thing I want to see is I want to be reaffirmed that I'm on the right page. So I need to see imagery and also text that says, okay, this is a home care, in, a home care agency in Surrey, an imagery that represents that. Next, I want to learn a little bit about the company. company. So a little summary or sort of company review, a um, couple of words, a bit about the company. But next, make it easy for me to know how do you differ to the competitor down the road? So maybe, you know, create some USPs. Three, and it could be, you could title it three reasons why people choose us, something like that. And the reason why that's important is people who are looking for care for the very first time, they don't know the key differences. Mm -hmm. So if you can easily say, so what would usually happen is people go look for information, they take information away, they chat with a spouse. If you've already told them the three things, your, your, your best three things, you're giving them info that when they're chatting with their spouse, they could say, okay, by the way, they've been running for X amount of years, you know, they're family owned and X, whatever it is, you know that better than me. So now I've been affirmed. I've seen a company overview. I've got the USPs. Now I need to build some trust yeah. because care is all about trust. So you want to have a couple of trust factors. What are trust factors? That could be your CQC widget embedded mm -hmm. on that page. We're big on landing pages. So um, the page that people land on, on had that CQC widget there. Um, okay, you can have, to just ask you to explain what a landing page is compared to a website. Oh, <laughs> oh great. Yeah, no, good, good, good. So a landing page has one sole purpose. It's a one page website, if you like. And the whole aim is to drive traffic to that uh, page. And the aim is for people to reach out to you. Mm -hmm. Build confidence and they reach out to you. Some people have really big websites and Let's say someone is um, has high intent and they're ready to inquire, but then they, they start reading your news posts, they start reading your blogs, they start reading all sorts of stuff. You take them away from the action that you want. So a landing page has that sole purpose. That's something that we recommend with our PPC campaigns as well. So, where was I? So, trust factors. Trust factors. So CQC widget, testimonials, Third-party testimonials. Mm -hmm. So let's say you've got testimonials on your um, uh, homecare.co.uk directory. Embed that there. That builds quite a lot of trust. Um, pictures of the team. Um, awards you've built up. I can go on for ages, but build up their trust so they realize this company, you know, I feel comfortable um, engaging with this company. And then the big one, which most people completely forget about, is lead triggers. Mm -hmm. You've worked really hard to drive people to your website. You put your best foot forward with the content. Now you want them to reach out to you. Now, I'll, I'll talk you through a couple of different lead triggers. The first one is the telephone number. Now, it sounds so simple, but some people don't have their telephone number on their website in all areas. They only have it on the Contact Us page. And if you think of it from a user's point of view, make it easy for them. We recommend every two scrolls the telephone number should be there. So as they're building confidence, building trust, you just want them to whack that call, you know, call button and re reach out to you. One of the easy ways to do this is a bit more technical is just to have the header bar 
-hmm. embed the telephone number there. And even if the person scrolled on a mobile desktop and tablet, the telephone number will always be there. Follow them as they're scrolling down. Yeah. So the telephone number. The other one is a form submission box. Now, some people put their email address static on the website. Now, you have to think about how people are reaching your website. Mm -hmm. Some people will be reaching your website from a, a phone. Some people will be reaching it from a tablet. Some people from a desktop. Not all these devices have the functionality that you click on the email address and it opens up Outlook or whatever it is. Someone might stop that whole, you know, I want to email them, try and copy and paste mm -hmm. it, open something else and think, look, I can't be bothered. They're not making it easy for me. So what you want to do is embed a form submission box on that page. So from the user's point of view, they fill their details and then they can hit submit. They've got an email and you've got their contact details. Um, the next one is one that people don't do a lot of, and that's um, the brochure download. So some people have a brochure on their website, but what they do is they say, you know, download our brochure, and they have a, a call to action button there. And when you click on it, it directly goes to their brochure. Mm -hmm. But actually, that's a great way to collect information on who's been on your website. So in order to get the brochure, name, email address, number, they get the brochure, you get their contact details. And the great thing about that is people aren't going to type, you know, things in home care, sorry, for fun. They've landed on your page and then they've also gone to the trouble downloading the brochure. That tells you they're interested. So you can put a process internally that just says, hey, you downloaded our brochure, you know, 48 hours ago, just wanted to see if there's anywhere we can help or answer any questions. So that's a really big one. And then the final one, and I think pretty much everyone should be doing this, and I've been talking about this for a long time, that's 24-hour live chat. 24-hour live chat, it can, it's, it can be outsourced. So we've got um, a, outsourced product, uh, a, a live chat product where you outsource it. We've got reps in different time zones across the world, but you can do it yourself. But what we found is that loads of inquiries come outside of work hours. So evenings and weekends. Um, and it could be, you know, we find it could be when people put their kids to bed or um, when they're in front of the TV. But what we find is with sons and daughters, especially guys who are paying privately, they've got hectic life schedules. Mm -hmm. So it might be on evenings and weekends when they get an opportunity to start doing their searching and come to your website. And if they saw a widget there that where they're available to chat, it's like, oh, brilliant. Let's convert now instead of just visiting the website and bouncing and coming back during work hours. So that's just a couple of lead triggers that we could um, include as well. No, that was great. And just to summarize what Toby said that I was writing it all down because I'm learning too. <laughs> and super interesting for me. Um, and yeah, just summarize those points. So you have a clear intro that makes it very, very obvious what you do, where you operate, who you are. Then you make sure you include your USPs. Now, um, we did have a question here that says, how do small independent providers compete with the large corporate providers who are dominating SEO? And we'll come back to that in a second, but I think your USP can really help you stand out there. You know, as a smaller provider, um, you become, say, you know, you are family run, or, you know, you, you have a really close relationship with your, with your uh, clients because you're smaller. So we can just go back to that question in a second, but the next thing you said was to build trust. Um, and you can do that in a number of ways, but things like a CQC widget are super important and your testimonials will also help. They're things you can get going on right away. Um, the next thing was your lead triggers, making sure that you've got really, really clear call to actions and your phone number is everywhere. You need people to get in touch with you. Um, if you have a brochure, make sure that that's downloadable and that can tie in with your lead triggers so you get people's information. And the next one was the 24 hour support. Okay. You got it. So, <laughs> and you know what? It's, it, you know, even us, we're always learning. I'll tell you, and the reason why is with everything we do, I'm not just saying this because it sounds good. We are huge on tracking. So all of the campaigns, we've run hundreds of home care campaigns, hundreds of care home campaigns, and we do a lot of data analysis, and we know exactly where people are spending the time. They look at first, we see heat maps. And this is the thing, even when someone would come to us and say, we want to run a campaign tomorrow, or yesterday, we say, hold on, we have to go through our process yeah. to make sure you're actually starting at ground zero instead of minus 10. 
And then once we're happy, we will just, you know, recommend some changes. If you've got um, um, a web developer that you've got contact details, or we'll just write what the recommendation should be, make these changes, and then we can go live thereafter. I suppose there's no point running marketing campaigns to a website that isn't going to work its hardest for you. No, because you can drive traffic to the site, but you can't put someone in a headlock and say, inquire. <laughs> you know, they have to buy into your business. Yeah, for sure. Super, super important. Now, just to go back to that question, how do small independent providers compete with the large corporate providers who are dominating SEO? This is a really, really good question. So thank you, Kelly, for asking it. Um, I'd yeah, like to talk so, to you, Toby. So first of all, people, not everyone wants to work with the bigger providers. Some people might prefer that it's an independent. Let's just say someone who's buying a car, and I don't want to relate this to a car, but someone who's buying a car may not want the BMW. They might want a different brand. So it's about every company's different. Every single company is different. Yeah. And if you put your best foot forward, you would attract the right clients for you and not the not clients that, um, you know, some people, what they do is they start looking at other big companies and copy copy that mm -hmm. when actually in the long run you are not that company so have an internal discussion look at how are we really different is it is it the backgrounds that you have most people before they start a home care business they might have you know seven ten years in healthcare or whatever it is or it might be a family run business mm -hmm. put that in front and the good thing about this is if you're running like google ad campaigns you can test this you could run a period of time where the campaign's running you put a certain set of USPs with certain call to actions in certain areas, and you can realize our conversion rate was X. Mm -hmm. But actually, when we changed it to this, it shot through the roof. So actually, that works better. So there is a bit of testing, but to begin with, start from ground zero. Yeah. We'll talk a little bit more in a minute about testing and the kind of results you need to be looking at. Um, but I think you just touched on a really, really good point on running Google Ads. Now, the next question I have for you here is what would you say is the ideal digital marketing mix for a care agency? So what kind of things should they be doing to make sure that they're showing up? I'm just gonna grab my charger. <laughs> yes, no worries, and I'll talk to the rest of you. Well, <laughs> Emily's left me. Okay, sorry. <laughs> You're on your own. Let me, take, um, let me take a step back and explain this because it's really important you understand the differences. So each Google and Facebook have different they're different styles of marketing. Facebook is what you call disruption marketing. Disruption marketing is things like Facebook, it's like magazines, it's like billboards. <clears throat> so let's take, let's say this is a magazine right now. I'm, I'm looking for a magazine. I'm thinking, yeah, okay, and I see your ad. Mm -hmm. What it needs to do is trying to disrupt my flow so I can consume the information, but then hopefully, it's relevant at that given time. But in most instances, it's not. So with Facebook, for someone who's saying they wanna attract private clients and get inquiries, we wouldn't say start with Facebook first because some of those people who see your Facebook ads, are they on the market for home care? Um, are, they, are there parents within, within your location? We usually find that the sons and daughters don't necessarily live in the location where their loved ones who require care are. So the other style of marketing is intent marketing. And as the name suggests, you, want, you know their intention. If, if me, you, or anyone on this chat right now is looking for something, where's the first place they go? Google. So you want to make sure when someone's searching in Google for domiciliary care, postcode, home care, postcode, care at home, postcode, you are there. And you can do that very easy with Google Ads. So answer to your question, uh, what is the ideal mix? The ideal mix is actually doing everything, being omnipresent, and we're gonna come back to that. But you have to understand where the bulk of the budget should lie. And mm -hmm. I personally feel it should be in Google AdWords because what you do is you're getting a fresh new set of people who you know are looking for home care right now and driving them through to your website and then let me let me let me talk you through how you can use facebook when people come to your website and we spoke about building trust and that sort of stuff they want to learn a little bit more about the business 
And if they see you've got a Facebook page, they might click through and they can learn a bit more about the business. So it's about um, that period where they're in a consideration phase. That's when your Facebook activity becomes really vital because yeah. as they scroll through, they see, oh, wow, you know, um, carer of the month for celebrating a carer that have been with the company for 10 years. And they can really get an understanding and see that you're active. So and when I was talking, what I was talking about was Facebook organic posts. Yeah. But with, you can also use paid Facebook remarketing, but I don't want to talk about that now, but maybe if we get time later, I could talk about that a little bit more. But does, does that make sense so far? Yeah, if that's all making sense to you in the chat, please do let me know. And also, if you have any questions or you want to share with us exactly, you know, how you're splitting your marketing between Google and Facebook, that would be really, really interesting to know as well. Um, all good so far from Lizzie. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> and of course, any questions you have while we're going along, if you, you know, want me to stop Toby at any point and make him explain something a bit more, please do do that. Um, we are here to, uh, to make sure this is useful for you. But no, perfect. That was really, really interesting for me as well. And I think it's a lot like the website, you know. You need to start from zero and make sure you're getting those people that are actually looking. Um, mm -hmm. Facebook can be a useful tool. Uh, and I think, you know, we at Birdie, that's how we use it, to make sure we're showing that we have presence, you know. Um, it's almost less to do with, with selling and, and more to do with this is us and this is our brand. It's kind of brand building, which, again, is really, really useful. And there is a play for brand building. So for example, smaller home care businesses, usually they want to increase their weekly hours. So focus on lead generation. Mm -hmm. The bigger ones who already have that lead generation in play, then you can afford to put some marketing pounds in the brand building on top because you've got the constant flow of inquiries mm -hmm. Then you can do more of the brand awareness, paid advertising where you don't necessarily require them to turn to inquiries, but you just want to get your message out there a little bit more. Yeah, it makes total sense. Now, the next question I have for you is, this is always an interesting one. Um, and I would like to know, actually, if anyone has made any uh, mistakes as well. That would be interesting uh, to see. But, Toby, what are the biggest mistakes that you see uh, care agencies make when they start marketing? What, what Peter just said right now. So, Peter said, what sort of spend would mm -hmm. you advise? The mistake that most people make is not an ad adequate spend. And yeah. if I start on Google Ads, for example, some people say, yeah, we've got a marketing budget of X, just you know, try and get as much traffic as possible. What we say is you need to work backwards. You need to understand in your given area, what are the publishers charging per click? And when you know that, you can then say, well, I want an additional, let's say you're getting 10 visits a month to your website. Yeah. Currently, organically, and you want it, and then you you said you wanted to uh, triple your inquiries. Well, you can run a paid campaign which can drive an extra twenty clicks mm -hmm. a day, six hundred clicks a month, and then you just times what your average cost per click is in your area by the, the amount of visits you want per day. So keeping numbers simple, let's say you wanted ten clicks a day and your average cost per click was two pound, that's 20 pound a day, daily budget, and then 600 pound a day, monthly budget. So there's some math into this. And the reason mm -hmm. why that's important is because some people just waste their money running Google Ads without enough visits to their website. And they don't take in consideration um, the click to lead rate. And what do I mean by that? Different industries have different click to lead rates. If I had a terrible tooth right now and you know I really needed an emergency dentist, if I search for an emergency dentist in Docklands, I see an ad, I click on it, there's a higher percentage of chance I'm gonna just call them right away because I'm in agony. Same as locksmith or emergency plumber, whatever it is. But with care, it's a considered search. So you need to make sure you've got enough daily visitors to your website to actually produce a conversion and worry about that. So the biggest mistake I see is not having the right budget. And the second mis mistake is not having the right plan and executing on that plan. Um, and actually, that's enough for now. But there's, 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 quite, a, there's quite a few. It's, it's, it, it can be challenging. But 
One other thing, I'd actually, what I was going to say, let me say it, is having the wrong expectations. So some people, mm -hmm. what I found in this sector, when we specialise in this sector, we are a little bit more behind when it comes to adapting sophisticated digital marketing. And sometimes I have conversations and people say, yeah, I want to spend this. And tomorrow I want 20 phone calls. I'm like, it's not going to happen. You have to yeah. realise that this isn't magic here. There's testing and there's optimization. So we're big on really edu on education to manage expectations. So you you understand what you're trying to do, and there's a testing phase as well. And that links really really well to the next question, which is all about tracking results. And I think this is a mistake that quite a lot of people are guilty of. They throw money at something. And then they don't realize, you know, what it's even done for them. It might have bought them a lead. It might have bought them five. It might have bought them 20. But how do they know? So if you could explain a little bit, because I know at Smooth Digital, you do a lot of tracking, and that's super important to kind of your whole marketing um, plan. So if you could explain a bit about that, that would be great. All right. So before I talk about what we do, let me take a couple steps back. As a standard, all care businesses need to be literally tracking when, when I say tracking noting down all the inquiries that come into their business per month that needs to be a standard and the first thing, way of doing that so we, we talk to people and they say that they're still writing down inquiries on paper and when you ask them you know what happened with this person they have no clue they don't even know that these inquiries came through so the first thing is track and note down all your inquiries and can use something simple like excel or google sheets that's the first level then the other thing you want to track, and this is a completely free tool, is Google, um, use Google Analytics to track the source of where your traffic's coming from mm -hmm. and review that monthly. So some of you may have invested in um, directory websites. And from reviewing your Google Analytics, you might realize, actually, I'm not really getting much traffic from this website at all. And also review reviewing your Google Analytics, you might see, wait, this other source of marketing, which I'm not spending for, let's say mm -hmm. Google, uh, Bing, Bing search engine, it's actually driving quite a lot of visits to our site. And then it gives you the intel on what you should continue doing and what you should stop doing or do more of if something's working really well. And on a monthly basis, just sit down with your team and say, okay, let's analyze total inquiries that we've got in the business and in total um, traffic that we've got this given month and where it's coming from. Now, what we do for our clients, and we should give it to them for free, is we give them a reporting suite and it goes, it takes it to the next level. And what that reporting suite does is it they can log in and per marketing channel, let's say Google Ads, you can see all the you know usual data, traffic, et cetera. But from that traffic, how many actually converted into phone calls? Yeah. Um, email those full submissions and then you can actually play back that in um, the calls so one you can hear first of all gives you the confidence to know that oh actually I'm actually getting a return from this so that's that's good two you can hear how your staff are handling the inquiries and sometimes businesses say that you know they're struggling with their marketing but from adding this layer of transparency on they'll realize they've got a problem with the people who handle the inquiries so they can use that for training um, and then the final thing is, as I said, we're quite big on data. There's going to be keywords, phrases that people type into Google that drive traffic to your website. However, there will be a finite amount of those keywords that actually drive leads, mm -hmm. drive calls. So we use that data to track back which ones are actually worth investing and optimize on. So um, there are some third party uh, platforms out there you can bolt on, it has a monthly charge, but that's the level of tracking that you, you know, you know, even if you can't do the really advanced version, at least at a bare minimum, have a total inquiries um, sort of spreadsheet, spreadsheet or CRM and a, a number of sort of free CRMs out there as well. Super interesting, and I, I probably speak for a lot of us when we say Google Analytics makes a lot of sense, but it can be quite difficult to, I suppose, get a grip on. You know, you have to understand where things like, well, what to even filter by, for example, or what to look at. And one thing you just mentioned was 
um, you track back to look at the lead generating search terms and the keywords. Now, I'm not going to get you to explain how to do that on Google Analytics, but what would be interesting is maybe to give a quick example so people can really understand, you know, they might be um, doing similar things and they might not know. Yeah, so Google, Google, the example I gave in terms of tracking back which keywords generate calls, Google Analytics is, is limited there, so you can't do that. That's why we bolted on this additional tool. But in the simplest sense, you at least want to track back which visits, um, which sources yeah. you're getting more visits from. And there's a really simple sort of pie, um, pie chart on Google Analytics where you can see X amount of traffic is coming from social, X amount is coming from directly, X amount is coming from search engines. And if, for example, you're investing there a lot of time in social and you're seeing that, wait a minute, this is actually not really driving much people to our site, it will allow you to reevaluate and say, okay, what can we do differently on social? Or should we be investing a little bit more in some of these other channels as well? I think the point is there as well. You wouldn't know if you weren't tracking or even looking at it. You might be getting 20 calls a week and you might think it's coming from Facebook because you're spending all of your time on Facebook, when actually it's not. It's coming from Google, or it could be Bing, like you said. It could be something you had no idea was even even racking it up. Be. Yeah, exactly. It could be, and Bing is another one. Maybe if we get time, I'll talk a little bit about that. But it could be something that you're not, or you might be spending on, but you're not really doing that much, mm -hmm. but it's driving quite a lot. So it's just, it's 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 all about doing some activity, analyzing it, doing less of what's not working so well and more of what's working so well. I think the, the key takeaway here is knowledge is power. <laughs> if you know what you're doing, then you're gonna have a much clearer kind of objective and know how to reach what you want to get to. Um, yeah. And like I mentioned before, you need to know what you're trying to get to before you even start any of this. Absolutely. But don't worry, I hope you guys are all following along, but I will be sending a full recording of this webinar and a roundup of the main points we've mentioned because I feel like there's a lot to take in and you guys are probably doing a lot of it right now, but uh, yeah. definitely watch this webinar back again to get those, those main tips. But the next question that I have for you, Toby, is we've been talking about all these great things that you can do and all the ways you can track your results and, and all the marketing mix and all that kind of stuff, but let's kind of really sort of Crystallize it down. What results can you expect if you're a care agency that markets your business well compared to one who they might be marketing a bit um, or they might not be marketing at all? You know, what what kind of results are we looking at here? That's one of those how long is a piece of string questions. But <laughs> let me answer that and I'll give you I'll, t I'll tell you why. ROI, we love ROI, we love talking about ROI. But within that equation, it involves the people who handle inquiries. Mm -hmm. There could be one business, two businesses that spend the exact same per month. They get visits to their site, they get inquiries coming through. For every 10 inquiries, one business might convert four. For every 10 inquiries, one business might convert two. ROI takes into consideration the overall, um, the overall mix, all those different, all those different um, all those different sections. So the section from when someone types something into Google, they play, they see four different um, ads. Mm -hmm. They've got a cho choice to make. When they come to the landing page, they re review the information. And this is the reason why we talk a lot about putting your best foot forward. Yeah. They've got a choice to make on whether they're going to inquire or not. When they call through to the business, that person on the other side of the phone they're gonna make a choice on whether they're gonna pursue it or not. So there's a number of different um, sort of conversion points you need to take in consideration. And if you're not tracking the full flow, you don't know where the bottleneck is. Now, we usually find the bottleneck is at the inquiry to assessment booked. Yeah. And that, that does affect, um, um, that does affect ROI. But to answer your direct question, we've got customers on our website been ha um, kind enough to share. He's received a 350% reve revenue increase, not visits, revenue increase from not running marketing to running marketing. And it's, it's, that's, it's actually a little bit straightforward because if you know how much traffic you're coming to your website and then you start paying for direct traffic in high intent traffic for people who are looking for your services now, it's easier 
to sort of drive people to your site. And then over time, you can work out the business's conversion rate. And I hope it's not getting too techie, but that's how you do it. Over time, you can realize uh, when you tweak the internal, um, sounds like I'm talking about a car now, but when you tweak the internal elements of the business and how good does our landing page convert? How good are we at the start? handling inquiries how good are we with follow-up then over time you can predict okay we now know as a business we've been doing this exercise for a while we've got loads of data for every 10 inquiries we get we now convert for example and then if you wanted to double that you can do some stuff on the front end to, to, to work towards that and that all goes back to your roi which is your return on investment how much are you putting in versus how much you're getting out. Um, mm. I think 350% increase is, is madness. That is crazy. I hope, Cameron, could you share that link maybe in the chat if people want to check that out? And I'll also share it um, in the follow-up email as well if you, uh, in case you want to refer back to it, because that's a really, like, yeah, and increase, there's, there's a load of wins. And one thing I would say is, because in the care sector, digital marketing is still quite young, there are some businesses who are absolutely cleaning up. Mm-hmm. They've got they've pretty much got no competition because other people are still doing the traditional forms of marketing. And yeah. some of these sophisticated companies thinking, wait a minute, where's, where's the competition? And they're yeah. absolutely cleaning up. But also some people who are running marketing, they're not tracking. So they can't actually quote those stats to know, what, you know what, what return they're getting off the back of it. Yeah, so now really is time to kind of capitalize on the fact that not all, not everyone is doing it, or if they are doing it, they're not doing it well. Okay. Now, the last question I have before we go into the Q&A, a couple of questions have come in, so don't worry, I will get to those. Um, but yes, this is the last question now. If everyone turns off their computers and grabs their sandwiches, what should they do first after listening to all this information we've just given them? So um, the good thing is, I'm huge on keeping things simple, although it is quite complex and sophisticated. I'm huge on keeping things simple. What we've actually done is we put together an ebook, jargon free. I think the first thing is is to read the ebook. Read yeah, this is the one. Read the ebook um, that we've got. It takes you through all the different steps, and it's the it's the same process we use to generate those results. So start with that, and then any other questions over and above that, just feel free to sort of reach out. I will share a link to that ebook um, as well. I think Cameron also has just shared it on the chat. Thanks, Cameron. Um, and I'll share that again in the email. And ebooks are really, really great because you can download them, you can read them as and when you want, you can save them to your desktop, refer back to them, they're always there for you. And this is a free resource, uh, for which is great. Like you can just take that. And of course, I think if you have any questions about it, uh, I'm sure we have details of uh, our Twitter and Toby's Twitter and the ways you can follow us there. But any questions you have after downloading it, please feel free to ask me a question. I'm sure Toby is the same. He would love to hear your questions on that. Um, that would be great. Cool. Now. Just gonna finish up here on the live Q&A and there's been a few questions that have come in. Um, and the first one is from Gavin here and it says, what drives people to websites in the first instance? Google search ranks the results shown. So how can you influence the outcome in your favor? It's very interesting. So <clears throat> there's two, when it comes to search, there's two parts. There's paid ads and then there's organic. When you do a search, the first four listings at the top are the paid ads. Mm-hmm. And keeping it simple, you can literally say, hey, Google, in this particular in this particular radius, when someone types in these set of keywords, and there will be all keywords around home care, show our ad. And that's how you appear in the, in the, in the uh, paid ad slot. That, because you're working directly with Google, that can happen in a jiffy, you can you can build a campaign within two weeks and you can be up there. The other alternative is the, um, I'll show you, there's, there's three, there's the Google Maps listing. So if any of you haven't claimed your Google Maps listing, it's really important just to uh, Google my business, sorry, Google my business listing, uh, claim it, it's free, have people um, add reviews to it. 
Um, a really good way of adding reviews quickly is just to get your staff review review the business. <laughs> so I've set people's, um, hey Google. You said too. <laughs> but um, yeah, I was saying, so have your staff give you reviews to mm -hmm. say how happy they are. Because as someone's searching through Google and they might see the Google, um, my business listings, they start reading all the reviews from happy staff. They think, well, actually, these are going to be the true people who are yeah. looking after my loved one. And then the final part is the organic listing. So it's Google over, over the years have been pushing that lower and lower. And being frank, Google don't make any money from that. So they don't, they don't, you know, they've just been pushing it lower and lower. But you can uh, manipulate the front and the back of your website so you appear higher in the search engines. And what you wanna do is first of all, make sure you've got all the right meta tags in place. Some people are gonna think, what are meta tags? But um, yeah. that's something for later. You've, you've, you've got the right descriptions. And what, yeah. what okay, let, let's, let, let me explain it like this. Google will never, um, so, so when someone does a search, Google's spiders go out and they fetch websites that have a description based that's answering the quest the user's question but one of the other elements and this is something all of you can be doing is blogging creating blogs blogging mm -hmm. at least once a month what twice uh, once a week and the reason why that's important is there's hundreds thousands of abandoned websites in on the internet when someone does a search domiciliary care provider and Google sends out its spiders, it, it won't pick a website that looks like it's been abandoned, hasn't been updated recently. But yeah. if you're constantly making blogs, you're telling Google, I'm live and clicking, if they type this in, bring me closer. But um, SEO is not my expertise, but I think that there's quite a lot of, um, there's a lot that you can do in-house when it comes to SEO. Mm -hmm. But if you wanna really invest in that heavily, you can reach out to a specialist and they can do a couple of clever things and put a, a plan together. Yeah, that, that's really, really useful. And I think it's a case of a kind of two pronged attack. You need to make sure that not only, you know, we, we spoke about it in the very beginning, making sure your website is selling you well, but you're also maintaining that. And there was a, a statement, I can't remember who said it, but they mentioned that you do need to update your website uh, every day if possible. And, you know, maybe you don't have the time, but with um, a really straightforward website, like the ones that we'll be building up in Birdie, you can just create a blog really, really easily. Just head in, type something out, and just make sure you're doing that, you know, once a week. Because if you're paying uh, to, you know, rank higher on Google, as well as the content alongside that, it's only going to work together. Um, and also, one of the other things is, if you are updating your social platforms a bit more frequently than your blogs, if you embed your widget of the social platform, Google takes that into consideration as well as, as updates happening on your website. That's really interesting. And I think a lot of our um, partner agencies probably do update their Facebook or their Instagrams a lot more than they would write a blog. So that's a really useful tip. Definitely note that one down and make sure that they're connected um, to your website. Now, the next question here is from Jackie, and I think this is obviously going to depend on her own personal circumstances, but she says, what number of clicks would you aim for to generate sufficient inquiries to grow your business by 20 to 30 hours per month? So Jackie probably asked that question before I just said that there's different yeah. uh, calculations you need to figure out. So how it would start is there's no mystic meg answer to this. You need to get something running, get traffic coming to your site, figure out for um, how many visits does it take to generate inquiries and how many inquiries yeah. do it take to get um, a customer? And then what's your average customer, um, um, weekly hours per customer? And then once you figure that out over time, you can start predicting, okay, great. I now figured out that we need X to produce Y. But it's different for everyone. The reason why is, Everyone has different USPs. And also in different parts of the UK, there's more or less competition. Mm -hmm. And that has that all, there's loads of variables that, um, uh, that you have to take in consideration as well. But over time, once you've been running the campaign for a little while, you can start predicting that and improving those conversions as well. 
I think just to yeah sum that up for you, Jackie, as well, you just need to go back and take a look at how you're performing now. Um, look at you know uh, your statistics now and then see where you want to be. And then, as Toby says, you can build up from there. But it's not going to be an instant thing. You know, you can't look at your data today and say, right, next week I want 30 more inquiries and I'm going to do one Facebook ad and that's going to get me there. You know, it's a constant learning process. And that's why we spoke so sort of in depth about making sure that you're tracking. Um, that was really important. So I have one more question here. Oh, there's another one from Peter. I think you missed my question. I'll go back to that in one second, Peter. Sorry about that. Okay. But there's one from Kelly that says, smooth work with two of my main competitors, Home Instead and Bluebird. How can smooth make sure that we still attract businesses as a small independent without the corporate budget? That's quite interesting. Hmm. It sounds like quite a lot of people are hung up on the, the, the bigger brand company versus a small independent. Um, it's, it's, you know, there's some, there's some businesses who have come to, you know, the care show, actually the Cameron, if you just put, um, uh, Sean's testimonial in the, in the link, in the chat, some businesses who come, who set up there, who just got their CQC, build the right website, they start running campaigns and they start getting inquiries and building their business. Yeah. So it's not, it seems like this is a, a thing that people are thinking about internally, but you know, there's there's not there's nothing. It's not. It's actually not a big deal. It's great to have loads of branding, but if you start, if you don't have a big brand, you don't have a big brand. You just run a campaign as as simple um, as simple as that. Super interesting, and we hear that a lot. You know, a lot of yeah. home care providers are small, and they think, well, how could I compete? You know, these these other companies yeah. are massive. And then, and then I wonder why, because even, you know, we're big on trying to, as we said, build trust. So we ask all of our clients to give testimonials. And sometimes people are reluctant to because they think they don't want people to know what they're doing. But it's, you know, I'm coming on here sharing everything. There could be, there's our competitors who jump on our webinars and we are the business. It's us. You are the the the, the business. You you deliver awesome care. You're, you've got testimonials from your from your from your staff who love working there you've got customers who l love your service like start building your brand start building it and you can do it there's i know it, it could be daunting sometimes because you do see some of these big brands all the time but it's you know it's when someone's looking for care and they're searching it's fair, fair game yeah and I think another interesting point that we hear a lot at Birdie is, you know, care is a very, very personal thing. And sometimes, you know, sons and daughters of, one, of, of loved ones that need care don't want to go to a giant corporate business. They might not feel the same level of trust. They might not feel that, you know, they have the right, what well, I suppose, the right things to care for their loved one. They want to be able to talk to someone, the same person, every single day when they're talking about their mom or their dad or their nan, whoever it is. And... You know, some people might want to go to a bigger business, but that doesn't necessarily mean they have more trust. Um, and that's something you guys should really, really remember. Um, and, it, and it can uh, be important. And also, no, the great thing about digital marketing is you can hone in to your specific territory. Mm -hmm. If some of these big brands are running national campaigns, but in your particular areas, your postcodes that you service, you are everywhere, not just online, but um, you've got posters in, you know, uh, shopping centers, they're doing leaflets in that area. Before you know it, to that individual, you are becoming omnipresent. They go online, they see you. you there's a leaflet that comes through the door, they see you. They see a poster in the shopping center. And from their perspective, they think this, this must be quite a big company. Yeah. Uh, I'm seeing it everywhere. So it builds their trust. It always comes down to trust as well. Now, the last question I have, Peter, it's the one I missed of yours. I'm really sorry about that. It was higher up. Um, he says, what sort of monthly spend would you advise on Google and how many inquiries would you expect this to generate roughly? Say the question again. He says, what sort of monthly spend would you advise on Google and how many inquiries would you expect this to generate roughly? I, I hate giving it the, the answer of it depends, but it does depend. It depends on what you want to achieve. It depends mm -hmm. on what budget you have available. Um, I'll give you some numbers, some simple numbers. Let's say, and excuse me, I'm not, I'm not using a calculator. Let's say, for example, you wanted, you, you, you first of all, 
In order to answer that question, you need to know in your specific area, what's the average cost per click? Once you know that, let's say you wanted an additional 20 clicks a day, that's 600 clicks a month. Mm -hmm. um, now you know what your daily budget is. What was the second part of the question? I mean, your monthly budget. So what sort of monthly spend would you advise on Google and how many inquiries would you expect this to generate? Okay, inquiries. So now you know the number of visits you're getting. Websites usually convert between 0 0.5 and that 3%, like really good websites, um, from, from click to lead. So using those numbers, you're looking at 4 to... Um, 16 inquiries per month. Uh, let me use a small one. Let's say 300, two to, not, uh, two to nine inquiries per month. So it, yeah. it depends. And as I, as I mentioned, there's an optimization phase. There's a period of time when you're optimizing the campaign, you're optimizing the, uh, the, the internal rate from inquiry to assessment. So, so it, 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 actually the first part is um, visit to inquiry. Yeah, so you're looking at between that range and your landing page does make a difference to the click to lead rate. So you might find to begin with, you start running the campaign and the first couple of months your click to lead rate is 1%. Mm -hmm. And then over the months you get it going towards three, which means you're spending the same amount but you're actually getting more inquiries for that same budget. So it's all about testing and optimizing during that period. Cameron did just share a, a video as well on how to calculate your spend. Um, and like I said before, I will share all of the resources that have been shared in this chat box um, after, after this webinar with you. Um, but we are just running over two o'clock, so we are out of time for questions, but thank you everyone for all of your questions that you asked. I think they were really, really useful. And, you know, a lot of the time, as we've mentioned, it does depend on what you're trying to achieve. But with some of the resources that we'll share with you after the session, I think it should be able to give you a really kind of clear grasp on where you're at now, where you want to be and what you need to do to get there. And of course, it's not uh, a fast process um, and it's not something that you can do overnight, but it's, it's something you can do. And obviously, Toby and the team at Smooth are there to help if if this is all a little bit too much and you know it's not something you feel like you can really get your teeth into so i will share all the details and um, how you can get in touch with them in the follow-up email as well as all the resources if you want to give it a crack yourself <laughs> now i suppose all that's left to say is just to say thank you toby for joining us today and i do hope that everyone on here found it useful and i hope that we answered your questions um, as best we could now, I've just put our details on screen for you now. And as I mentioned before, we'd be happy to get any questions that you have um, from the ebook or from any of the links that we'll share with you. And please do give us all a follow to stay up to date. I know Toby shares really, really useful stuff um, over on, on their social channels too. So if you want to uh, see an episode of Tea with Toby or the latest ebook, they'll be all over the social channels. Uh, so do make sure you follow. Now, as I said, I'll send you a recording of this webinar. I will send you all of the links uh, and a very brief write-up as well, so keep an eye on your inbox. Now, we'll announce our next webinar soon, but next week the tables are turning and Birdie is actually featuring in a webinar run by Aging 2.0. So we'll be talking about the future of care in our homes uh, alongside our partner agency, Fraser Home Care, and our Chief Integrated Care Officer at Birdie, Malta. He'll be talking about innovation in care and using data and technology to enable the best care. Now that gives me a bit of a break because I won't have to be the host, but you will see my face again if you'd like to join that. So I'll send you a link in the follow-up email too. We're gonna have loads coming for you. So once again, thank you very much, Toby, and thank you, Cameron, as well, for all of your help on the chat. That was really, really useful. Thank you. Now well, I'll take the time out. Really, uh, it was great being here and also uh, great work to the Birdie team during this COVID, keeping everyone uh, uh, in with something to do at their lunch times on a Friday. I've, I've actually <laughs> watched a couple of these as well. It's been really useful. So thanks a lot, um, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. It's been really great. Everyone enjoy your Friday and have a lovely weekend. And I will speak to you soon over email. Awesome. Thanks a lot. See ya.